Hello and welcome to my podcast, Heartfelt Praise, Embracing the Lord's Love with Deborah Thayer McLean. In today's podcast, we're going to have a few key takeaways or bullet points, if you will, in regards to anxiety. I'm going to share my personal testimony a little bit about struggling with anxiety and how I overcame it. I'm going to also share the reason I overcame it with the biblical wisdom in Luke 12, verse 22 through 28, and how much God teaches us about the futility of worrying and how important it is for us to rely on God and his provision. Worry, fear, anxious thoughts, These ruled my life for years. Today, I still struggle to keep them at bay. It's a continuous battle to tell my soul to give them to Jesus. My fears were usually unfounded. I think of the disciples in the storm while Jesus was asleep in the boat. Their fears were real to them. They were close to sinking and were quite a ways offshore. Jesus was asleep. He was at peace, despite the raging seas which tossed his boat like a cork on the open ocean. After he calmed the storm for the disciples, he rebuked them for having little faith. I often wonder what the Lord thinks as I allow anxiety to rule my mind. As, his, as my loving Father, He wants to see me set free from those thoughts. He wants me to trust that He has everything under control. Imagine yourself standing just feet outside of a dense forest. You have heard the stories and the warnings. Traveling alone through the forest is not a good idea. But you don't have a choice. You don't know anyone, and the only way for you to travel is through the forest. Dusk is drawing near, and your heart pounds faster and harder. Your palms are getting sweaty, and it seems like you can hear your own terrified heartbeat echoing through the woods. Why are you afraid? Nothing has happened. It's all vain imaginations running through your mind. Perhaps you are like me, and you worry about things that never actually happen. We worry about what people think. We worry about finances or health issues. We worry about the safety of those we love and so much more. Why do you worry This is important to identify. If your worries are stemmed from a childhood trauma, ask the Lord to heal you so that you can trust him without hesitation. You may have heard that the Bible tells us 365 times not to fear. Fear and anxiety go hand in hand. The Lord has gently reminded me of my anxious thought over the years. And I realized, as I wrote Rescued by Love, that worry and anxiety are barometers for what I considered more important than God. God is ultimately the one in control, even if things do not turn out as I want them to. Luke 12, 22, 2 through 28 is a common scripture, and we may have the habit of scanning, but not meditating on it. It is an account of Jesus telling us not to concern ourselves with the everyday things of life. God considered it so important that he allowed the teachings to be recorded twice in the Gospels. I will not read both of them to you, but let me read the Gospel of Luke's account from the NIV version. Then 
Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? As I mentioned in last week's podcast, the Father is love. If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Don't be afraid to ask the Lord for help with your worries and concerns. He doesn't like to see his children plagued with anxiety. He wants to set you free. Don't allow the enemy to condemn you if you are struggling. Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For years, I felt condemned when I was anxious. And it wasn't until I understood the revelation of the Father's love for me that I realized that He is not condemning but he would love to remove that burden from me if only I asked him to. Trade your anxiety for his peace. Trust that he is a good father. He knows better than we do what good gifts that we need, and he is not stingy, but pours them out on you. I provide prayer journals on my webpage, as well as a free Bible study for you to dig deeper. I encourage you to journal your thoughts as you read these portions of scriptures. Write a letter to the Lord. Give him your worries and lay them at his feet. Then I challenge you to revisit your journal in a few years and document what happened to those concerns. Jesus asks us in verse 25, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? One thing that stands out when I read the scripture is the question that Jesus asks after the first one. Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Now, wait a minute. Let's reread that. Since you cannot do this very little thing, God considers adding an hour to your life a very little thing. Not only is it impossible for us, but there is proof that it is terrible for our health when we worry. Worry causes stress. Stress raises our heart rate, our blood sugar, our sleep habits and appetites. That is only a few of the effects of worry. And Jesus said that we cannot add an hour to our life, but too much worry can take hours away. It's detrimental to learn how to leave your worries at the feet of Jesus. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 25 through 34, we see the same teaching of Jesus I encourage you to go ahead and read that passage of Scripture. Although it is very similar, there are a few differences between them. I challenge you to take heart. If something in life right now 
is causing you to worry and fear. The Lord tells us he will never leave us nor forsake us. No matter what you are facing, he already knows the outcome. Do not worry about tomorrow. Analyze what you are becoming anxious about. If it can be put off till another day, well, do it. Chances are it may never come to fruition anyway. Just like walking through the forest, don't be in fear of the wild animals or the robbers that might jump out into your path. Enjoy the journey, and if a danger comes, then, and only then, should you worry about it. Here's a statistic for you. Studies have shown that a significant portion of our worries never materialize into reality. According to research from the Penn State University, about 91% of worries were found to be false alarms. And of the remaining 9% that did come true, the outcomes were better than expected about a third of the time. Another study suggests that 85% of what we worry about never happens. And with the 15% that does happen, 89% of subjects discovered they could handle the difficulty better than expected, or the difficulty taught them a lesson worth learning. This indicates that a large majority of our fears are unfounded, and that even when our worries do come to pass, we are often more capable of handling them than we initially thought. As your loving Father, God wants you to give Him your burdens. He knows they are not helping you. His Word says to cast your cares on Him because He cares for you. In 1 Peter 5 verse 7. That is it for today. Thank you again for joining my podcast, Heartfelt Praise. Please subscribe and share this podcast with your friends. Let's get the word out there about God's amazing love. I'll see you next week.